This isn't how I usually introduce videos, but I needed to say a quick word before this one starts properly. I recorded this film at what I thought was the end of a run of bad luck, only for my personal demons to get in a few extra punches after the bell rang. The day after I recorded the upcoming video, I went down with a migraine that floored me for over a fortnight. Mrs A said it was the worst she's seen me endure in nearly 20 years together. Before I was fully recovered from that, I then had to have an urgent wisdom tooth extraction, which did for me for a couple of weeks more. So, if when you watch this you think I look a bit peaky, it's because less than 24 hours later, I was really ill. You'll also notice, if you're watching this on release, that I mention it being March when it was recorded, but it's coming out in May. The good news is that now I'm past that migraine, the wisdom tooth, and most of the challenges you'll hear about in the video, things are looking optimistic. I want to say a quick thank you here to everyone who's been there for me, checked in on me, helped me out, or just been a friend. And a very specific thanks to Kylie for all of those things, and for reading out the bit later on in this video that I found too difficult. This autistic community has shown me more empathy and kindness through these tough times than I could ever have hoped for. Though I'm sure there's plenty of experts out there, both of the academic and armchair variety, gagging to tell me that that's just because we're all too naive and unimaginative to recognise the social benefits of kicking someone when they're down. To them I say, shut your cake hole, and on with the show. Hi, I'm Quinn, and I'm autistic. Welcome to Autistomatic. Whilst this video stands alone, it's also a chapter in a longer story about handling huge life changes as an autistic adult. So, if you'd rather get up to speed first, there's a link to the previous chapters up above and in the description. After being made redundant last year, I decided to go it alone and try to make a living doing this. I'm in my 50s, and thanks to health changes and growing personal responsibilities, I can't go back to the kind of work I used to do. A total career change like this is huge and daunting for anyone, but I'm autistic, and that layers on the complexity, the uncertainty, the barriers, and yes, the fear. It's not easy to talk about this on screen so candidly, even for me, not because I'm embarrassed or fearful of repercussions, but because finding the words to describe something like this while it's still happening is way harder than doing it with the cushion of years or decades to blunt the impact of reprocessing difficult thoughts and emotions. That's even after five or six years of writing and making videos like this. Over the last couple of chapters, I talked about the incompatibilities between the usual expectations of a YouTuber and what I'm trying to do here. I had to dig deep into my reasons for doing this and reflect on how I myself learned about what it means to be autistic, to understand what you, the people who watch my stuff, want from me. It's clear to me now that the style of content that I've been talking about, the style at the heart of many a YouTube success story, and many would argue the success of the platform itself, isn't for me. I'm not saying I don't enjoy watching hours of exactly that kind of content myself, or that those creators should do anything differently. No. They're great at doing what they do now, and long may they reap the rewards of their endeavours. But I've accepted that the way they do this isn't for me or autistomatic. This film here was originally intended to be the What Next chapter. The first couple of videos were quite reflective and kind of set the stage for the future I plan to talk about today. I'm going to talk a little about that later and more in the next release, but this is a good example of what I talked about in the first part of why I'm not leaving YouTube. How some scripts are developed, some inspired, and others, like this, evolve. Because the circumstances or data, the DNA of writing as I called it a couple of videos back, changed in some way that affected the outcome. In 
this case, it was some of the comments left on the last couple of videos that made me rethink. Some of what you'll hear over the next 15 minutes or so was already written. Some has been copied and pasted from a later chapter, and much of it, including this sentence, is a rewrite. There were a couple of comments on those videos that left me feeling a little uneasy. I don't consider those commenters responsible for my unease. That's on my shoulders. They were worried that I might have been foreshadowing some drastic and unwelcome change of direction to meet the expectations of the modern media market. It was also suggested that the change from a black to a white background was potentially evidence of my intent to follow an, ironically, darker path. And they weren't the only ones to comment on the visual impact of this change. Now, I know all those comments come from a place of concern and warmth, so I'm not unhappy to see them, but I'm also not the kind of guy who can ignore such worries, and this script remix, I suppose, is the result. As I've learned more about my craft, if I can say that without sounding pretentious, and my awareness of the needs and sensitivities of my viewers and listeners grows, I adapt and change my processes to include and accommodate to make my work as accessible to as many people as I can. I try to find, as near as possible, an equitable balance between the many and varying needs of a highly neurodiverse audience. Now, I don't use that word very often, neurodiverse, but this is one occasion where no word is better. As far as I can tell, about two-thirds of my subscribers and regular viewers are neurodivergent. Mainly autistic, of course. But there are plenty of folks who aren't. At this point in time, they consider themselves to be completely neurotypical, allistic, not neurodivergent, or anything out of the ordinary. Nothing to see here, please! A lot of people get very hot under the collar when others misuse the word neurodiverse, when they might really mean neurodivergent. But since you guys have brains of all colours and flavours out there, including neurotypical, you fit the description to a T. Welcome to my neurodiverse audience, everyone. To encourage the average casual viewer to stay watching my work for longer than a few seconds, I have to make sure my videos are visually and orally engaging. I need to hold the attention of those internet passers-by long enough for them to start hearing what I'm saying. I talk about things which lie far outside the comfort zone of most people, so I have to grab their interest and hold it if I hope to open their eyes to something new. I'm trying to play my part in helping non-autistic people understand our autistic lives better, to answer questions nobody thinks to ask and blow away some of that fog of mystery that leads to conflicts and misunderstandings. If I don't follow at least some of the rules of engaging a general neurotypical audience, I don't stand a chance of achieving that goal. Neurodivergent folks are here for different reasons, though. I love it when I see comments telling me I've changed someone's mind. But the ones that hit me in the feels the most to make this all worthwhile are those which tell me that I've helped someone feel happier, less scared, or just seen in a way that brightened their day or lighten their load. I want as many of you as possible to share in those feelings, so I try to make this ride as comfortable as I can for as many sensitivities as I can practically accommodate for. So, when someone points out a sensitivity I've not accounted for, whether it be sensory, language, moral, or any other, I set about the eliminating, minimising, or mitigating of whatever's causing the problem. You know, those things we keep on harping on about needing other folks to be doing for us. The first thing to bite the dust in those early days was actually background music. On the very first video I uploaded on this channel, someone pointed out that the background music, whilst very quiet, still made it difficult for them to hear me as clearly as they'd like. There's a reason so many YouTubers use background music, and it's not because it's trendy. Making videos can be a total money pit, but it doesn't have to be an expensive business. If you're going to start out on the cheap like I did, you can achieve some fantastic results, but only by employing tricks of the trade and a heap of compromise. 
One of the first extras most new YouTubers dip into their savings for is a better microphone than the one built into their phone or camera. Often a cheap little Lavalier mic like this £10 baby from Amazon. I'm not sure how it's actually pronounced, by the way. Some people say Lavalier. Maybe they're right. I just hear Lavalier in my mind when I see the word, and except for now, it's not exactly a word I say out loud often. If our new YouTuber is taking things a bit more seriously, they'll process their sound with a free online tool or learn to use an open source program like Audacity to clean it up themselves manually. But even then, it ain't going to sound exactly like the professionals. So how do they cover up all those remaining imperfections and hide the sounds of the heating pipes clanking, the neighbour's dog barking or the delivery truck reversing outside? Why? Background music, of course! covers a multitude of sins. When I dropped the background music, it was welcomed by those viewers who'd mentioned having sensitivities, but it meant I had to start processing my sound far more thoroughly without background music to hide my production failings. Instead of spending half an hour noise reducing, filtering and boosting, I need several hours to manually clean up the audio on every release. And before I start filming, I go around the room taking down pictures and covering furniture and blankets to deaden reflected sounds every time I record. Some of that is a bit easier now as I've got better mics and facilities available and my skills have improved, but sound quality has remained a high priority since. The next big change was the filming backgrounds. To be consistent, to look professional and to hide the chaos of my life from the camera, I used chroma key or green screen from the start. The original plan was to design a new backdrop for each new video, and I settled on a blue-green colour palette because they're great colours for disguising the fringing you get from doing chroma key with cheap-ass lighting. But it didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. I experimented with simple moving backdrops, but that prompted feedback from people who found it visually distracting, so I eventually ended up with the plain black background I've used until very recently. That brings its own set of problems, though. For chroma key to work at its best, particularly with a plain background, you need a consistently coloured filming background. A smooth surface, no lumps, bumps or creases to cast shadows which will throw spanners in the works when you sit down to edit it days or weeks later. You have to think carefully about your setup, your lighting, what clothes, accessories and props are suitable, what colour your eyes are. But above all for me, it takes time. Not just the time it takes to set up, to film it, edit it and tweak it, but also the extra time it takes for the computer I edit all this on to produce the final render. The computation time, if you like. Whilst it's chugging away rendering, sometimes for a few hours at a time, I can't do anything else on it. So I try to do that rendering out of hours, so I can be doing something productive on that work PC in work time. The chroma key process adds on hours and hours of graft, plus rendering time on every video I make. So, under the current pressure to make the most of my time and energy, I need an alternative. I tried a professional black background, similar to this, but it really didn't work well at all, so I settled on this instead. When it's viable to go back to using chroma key again, which I hope won't be too long, I'll reinstate the darker backgrounds, because I vastly prefer them myself, to be honest. Perhaps it's the ageing goth in me? Now I'm a professional, I've had to look at every aspect of my workflow from start to finish and fine-tune it wherever I can. It's meant taking financial risks. When we got the payment for my redundancy, the first thing we did was work out how many months ahead we'd be able to pay our bills and expenses with it. Then did it again more frugally. But recently, a few things have happened, a few conversations have been had, and some lessons have been learned, which ended up with a silent sponsor helping out enough for me to budget for a few new things to make things work more smoothly around here. And they couldn't have come along at a better time. I've 
invested in a few gadgets and tools and committed to subscriptions for a couple of services and software that either make the job easier or improve quality in a way I think will make things more accessible. This is the first video I'm filming with new super duper pooper scooper all singing all dancing highfalutin rootin tootin brighty whitey lass all nighty technicolor dream lights for instance. And so I hope what you're seeing is a bit easier on the eye than the last time I used this backdrop. This is actually the fourth time I've filmed this video in five days, so I'm really hoping I've got it right this time. Last time I filmed it, the visuals looked like I got it right, but there was a problem with the sound, so there you go. I've always tried to make my work to the highest standards my skills, resources, knowledge and time allow. Not just here, but in everything I do. It appears to be a trait that's very common amongst us autistic types. But I am still learning, and between your feedback and my ongoing journey to making better films, I'm sure that we can find a way to tick most, if not all, the boxes over the next few months. I'll leave the rest of the production stuff for another day, though. The other big influence on the future of all things autistomatic is just life itself. All the non-autistomatic bits of my world. When I was made redundant, I went straight from the old 9 to 5 work routine into a similar 9 to 5 regime based around autistomatic. I took the path of least resistance approach and just transposed my old daily and weekly schedule into a new one with a different task focus. And it worked for a while. I was doing well at building up a bank of scripts, establishing a video pipeline where different videos would progress at different stages, and tentatively thinking about going back to social media when everything hit the fan again last August. It started with the computer failure. I've played video games since my age was in single digits, and for the last couple of decades I've gamed on a PC. The spec for a kick-ass gaming PC and a dream video editing rig are pretty close, which was part of the attraction of making videos in the first place. I already had the basic tools at home. My PC of the time wouldn't have kicked anybody's bottom terribly hard, but it was good enough to start dabbling with video. For practical reasons, I use laptops instead of building my own PCs these days, and last August, the one I'd been using for about 18 months, went pop and died. Thankfully, in these days of internet shopping and next day delivery, I was able to replace it quickly. But no sooner had the new one arrived than disaster struck again. After managing to avoid it altogether for three and a half years, I got COVID. Not just me, but Mrs A and my in-laws as well, all within a day or two of each other. We think I actually brought it home with me from a routine blood test at the doctor's. It hit us hard. Very hard indeed. I was out of action completely for over a week, whilst Mrs A lay delirious in bed, convinced that if she fell asleep, she might not wake up. It was horrible. Recovering from it hasn't been straightforward either. I leave it up to others to decide if it counts as long COVID, but it's only in the last couple of weeks, it's March now, that I've started to feel functionally human again. And even then, I had a bad day yesterday and didn't do half of what I planned, so I'm hoping to make up for it today. This next segment is quite sad, and I know that it's news that some of you will find hard to hear. I know I can't read this next bit out loud because I crumbled to pieces when I wrote it. So I've asked a friend to read it for me. It won't take long, and I'll just put a black screen up until it's over if you don't want to hear it yourself. Um, when you see me back, then we'll be starting again. Just as I was rising up out of the pit COVID cast me into, Jimmy, the autistomatic cat, went off his food and started hiding in quiet corners. He came out for cuddles and engaged with us, but he wasn't himself. We got worried and since I was the only one well enough, and barely at that, I took him to the vet, where I had to say goodbye. He was very ill, and there was nothing we could do to help him get better. The vet assured me that 
he wouldn't have been aware of it until very recently. So at least I know he wasn't suffering in silence. I lost one of the best friends I've ever had in the blink of an eye. And it was too much. That was the final straw that pushed me into burnout. Between then and now, I've barely surfaced from raw survival mode. The first steps video I put up in November was a struggle, and it didn't get much easier for the Christmas release because I was both physically low and emotionally crushed. I worked whenever I felt able, but there were too many days when I could barely switch channels on the telly, let alone make something for other people to watch. Now, I'm obviously feeling a bit better now. I'm not completely out of the woods, but I'm following the path and I expect to see clear ground soon if I hold my nerve and follow the map. I'm not a young man anymore, and I can't hack the pace the way I used to. Not only do I have my own health issues and age-related gubbins to contend with, my wife is disabled too. And on days when she needs me the most, I don't get much time to work on Autistomatic. So streamlining everything from where I do my writing and how I film to when we eat dinner and who gets up first in the morning has been essential to our survival, let alone prosperity. Achieving everything on my list has turned our lives and our house upside down. I've had to dig deeply into my redundancy reserves to get us this far and risk valuable funds on new tools. They should help me to produce more videos at better quality faster than ever before, but I also have to learn to better pace myself and be more ready to accommodate the unexpected when it happens. From your perspective as a viewer, not much will change, except for the different background and more of me more often. But behind the scenes, it's been a whirlwind of the new. I'm not ignoring all the advice from the Be More YouTube playbook. Some of it's actually useful. But I'm only incorporating those ideas I think will add to what I do, without losing any of what people have grown to trust. And if those ideas don't work out, you'll tell me. I'm not changing my editing style to one of jump cuts and memes, nor will I start churning out pointless content to fill the void. And no, I didn't grow my hair back to dye it blue or green. But why did I grow it in the first place? The answer is... Very dull, actually. It's just curiosity. I've been shaving my head for a few years now, and I was curious to see what my hair looks like now I'm a few years further into middle age. I'm actually greyer than I realised, and finally starting to thin a bit. Congratulations, Quinn! You're officially middle-aged! Anyway, one of the Be More YouTube ideas that I think will fit in well is comment response videos. You guys leave some amazing comments with some thought-provoking ideas worth discussing, and I'm terrible at the best of times at answering comments and correspondence. I don't discuss anything sent to me privately or by email and never will, but comments on YouTube are out there in the public domain anyway, and some of you put a lot of thought into what you post. Given that I'm optimising my time and I've just made it easier to produce videos quickly, I think airing your most noteworthy comments on screen and opening up some of those topics to a wider discussion sounds like a fine plan. So, consider this a warning. If you've left any comments before that you might be embarrassed about, now's your chance to go and find and delete them. There's so much I've learned from the past couple of years that I'm itching to talk about. And finding new ways of doing that without making it too difficult for myself or compromising the qualities people appreciate has been both a challenging but also sometimes joyful rabbit hole to dive down. A large part of me getting back on top of things is in realising what Autistomatic has meant to so many of you, and I want to keep doing it for as long as possible. The trick to it lies in making sure enough pounds, dollars, euros and whatevers keep flowing to keep us afloat. But my payment, the reward for all my hard work, is knowing that loads of you who watch my videos feel a little better about yourself, a little more confident, or just a little bit less beaten down by the world afterwards. 
You can't buy that feeling. I'll cover the ground originally meant for today next time. I think I've established well enough that the Be More YouTube way of doing things isn't going to happen. But I haven't talked about what I do have planned or how I hope to make this work going forward. I think that might be enough of this story for a little while though, so I think the next one after that will be the comment response video I mentioned just now. It's good to be back though. I'm Quinn and I'm autistic. Thank you for watching. If you've already liked and subscribed and would like to support the channel more, then please follow the Patreon links in the description to pledge what you feel is fair and affordable to help keep the lights on here and the content keep flowing.